What's going on, guys? Welcome to another piano live lesson. I'm Andrew here with Jordan, mm -hmm. and hey today we're learning what song? Dream on Aerosmith. Awesome. Yeah, what this is a, this is quite the tune. I was uh, yes, uh, somebody I forget one of you requested it a few weeks back, I think. So I dove into it uh, past a week here, and there's a lot to this one. Like there's there's a lot of cool parts. Um, I actually really think that the way the chords move in the left hand is really um, exciting and it, it, it's, a, it's a cool sort of technique for any piano player to learn. So I'm going to talk about what the chords are doing in the left hand and how they kind of cleverly shift from chord to chord here. Um, so first things first, we'll just talk about what key the song is in. The song is in the key of F minor, which means you have B flat, you have E flat, you have A flat, and you have D flat. So you got these four uh, black keys to keep in mind whenever you're uh, playing. Um, and we'll just dive right into the intro progression. It's kind of like this instrumental little piano ballad-y part. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, a, it's a cool progression. We're just going to look at the right hand here, and I'm just going to get you to set that to, B, uh, to 50 BPM. And I'll play it really slow, and then we'll look at what it's doing. Okay, here we go. That's the first line of the song, that little uh, kind of melody movement there. Um, so it's basically this kind of rocking motion. You'll see this first uh, set of, this first kind of chord is actually a, uh, it's an F minor chord in uh, second inversion. So here's your F minor in root, first inversion, and then second inversion. So we have our C in the bass, we have our F, and then we have our A flat. Um, but the chords are played kind of broken, so we, we sort of toggle. Um, the, uh, the, the, the top two notes with, uh, with the bottom note. So we sort of, we have our F and A flat, and then we do C. So for any like new piano player, just even that motion there is a good thing to practice with any chords that you use. And this motion kind of continues throughout this whole phrase. We sort of keep this C note as our, it's almost like our, our rhythm. So we're always playing C. And we're moving our uh, we're moving our finger two and three down to reflect the chord changes. So we start off with this F chord, and then we go down to play just a C major C minor triad. Part, pardon me. So, so now we have our E flat and our G up top. So F C minor, and then we kind of have this interesting chord here. It's almost like a B flat seven kind of style chord. So it's made up of notes C, D, and A flat. And again, we have that same pattern. So we're using this, this general kind of like rule where we play our top two notes together and then we alternate with that C note. So F minor, C minor, and now we have flat and then C and then we go down to our notes are G and D flat so I'll play that whole sequence there so that's the first kind of thing to, to practice um, Honestly, I just think of it as this finger two is kind of what's reflecting the different uh, tone changes because we're moving sort of chromatically down. Right. And just in a moment here, we'll get into what the left hand does in this section to reflect those chord changes in a bit more of a definitive way. But before we do that, let's just demo this one more time at 50. Okay. Okay. And just follow along and, you know, um, yeah, just go real slow with this. Three. Okay, and 
then that phrase finishes off with uh, one little final ending where it goes from this F minor chord, and then it bops up actually two notes. So it goes from F and A flat to G and B flat. So F A flat, F A flat, G B flat, and then it finishes on that F minor triad. So the whole sequence. Okay, so um, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a challenging little piano piece for people mm -hmm. that might be new players, but it's, uh, it's super iconic, you know, it's, it's one of those like, oh yeah, anyone, anyone sort of hears that and you're like, oh yeah, that's that Aerosmith song. So the intro uh, kind of runs that progression twice, and the first time around, uh, I just have it notated as straight, um, we just play F in the, in the, bass clef, we play it F half notes. So uh, check out the PDF below the video, by the way, if you haven't already, because there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So the first repetition around is just you play these F half notes. Pardon me. second time around, it actually moves down um, kind of in line with what your finger two is doing in the right hand. So we start off in this F chord, and then it moves down to an E flat, and then it moves down to a D, and then it moves to a D flat, and then back to F. And it just holds on that F. So it's, it's sort of like this chromatic movement after we have a we have a full tone jump down from F to E flat and then we go so and then we are back to our one make sense totally yeah so let's try one more time with that 50 BPM I'm gonna do both hands uh, just top to bottom of that repetition. So this is going to be sort of the first two lines of the uh, of the song here, and then we'll get into what the kind of verses are doing. Cool. Yeah. So one, two, three. Here we go. Um, there's one final little push to, to that section before the actual song starts, I just remembered now. So it has a little bit of a different movement here. This is kind of the final stage of this instrumental section. And after that, you've got the whole thing. So now we go down, after we do that, uh, then we go down to our B flat in the bass. And we play D, F, and A flat. Kind of pulse on this really tense chord here. So it's a it's a C, a D flat, and a G, and then the bass clef plays E flat, and then E, and then we land back on the one. Nice. And it kind of just holds there, and that's that's the intro of of the entire song. So I'm gonna just play this at sort of uh, around the speed that the that the song is in. Can we try this at uh, 75 BPM? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, so here's the whole intro. And remember, take this like super slow. I would say just probably practice to the right hand at the beginning. Um, and then once once you're comfortable with that, even just holding whole note F uh, in the bass would, would, would kind of go a long way just to syncing up your left hand and right hand together. Right. Yeah, it's a good world.
So that's that. Um, you know, there's even that's that that in itself is kind of a mouthful to learn. So if anyone's got questions, uh, obviously just let me know. Um, so yeah, let's move on to let's move on to the verse. Yeah, just remember, you guys can submit questions yeah. for us to answer. Totally. Jordan to answer. Yeah. Uh, below the video. Mm -hmm. Ask below the video, please do. Okay, so now. Um, now I've sort of made just a, like a bit of an adaptation of this song. Uh, there's a whole ton of different parts of it in the recording, but this is how I play it on the piano that, in the way that sort of reflects the chord movements in the uh, in the recording. So basically, the chords work very similarly in the verse as they do in that intro. Um, I just have straight quarter notes uh, in the left hand here, starting on F minor, and then just sort of moving down to a C minor, so F minor root position, C minor, and then all I'm doing is moving my, uh, my finger five and finger three down to reflect the chord changes, but my thumb up top is kind of the, the common tone of all these chords now. Okay. So I go, and this is kind of like a D minor seven here, and then a D flat major seven here. That's the main kind of palette that the verse progression is going to be built on. And the right hand melody, um, I sort of made a simplified version of what the, what the vocals are doing because they're really bluesy kind of, there's a lot of embellishments and mm -hmm. little runs that uh, Steven Tyler is doing in the song. So I have uh, on, on the sheet music there, you can see some, some the kind of like guideline notation that I use when I'm sort of doing a cover like this, mm -hmm. where it's like this is this is pretty close to what the vocals are doing, but they're not. It's not definitive. So if you have ways to kind of personalize it or or, or make it your own, right? You know, totally. Even like send it my way, or just uh, you know, just never be afraid to experiment with that kind of thing. Right. Um, but the general rules for uh, the vocal melody is it's going to be in F minor. It's going to be sort of a pentatonic okay. scale. So. So I'll just play. Let's go back to fifty. Sure. And we'll we'll do this chord movement in the left hand, and I'll show you what the what the right hand is doing. One, two, three, four. So there's a lot of movement going on there, but generally speaking, it's uh, yeah. So it's all based in in, in kind of like um, fourth and fifth intervals is how I go about learning a melody like that, sort okay. of by ear. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Like I know you're a good. You've got some good ears on you. Like, how do you go about picking vocal melodies? Yeah, out? it's tough. I mean, I like to try and maybe, like with guitar, it's very different just because of the gaps between the strings. Right. So you can find distance between notes up and down and side to side, which mm -hmm. is a little bit different. Yeah. And I actually find doing it how a piano player would a little bit and actually playing, typically most, especially in popular music, it's yeah. based on a pentatonic scale yeah. a lot of the time, yeah. and just on one string, so that it, it is very similar to oh, piano. Okay, so you, so you have that kind of linear way of Exactly, I do a fair it. amount of that, and I find mm -hmm. that that 
kind of makes it a little bit easier for the melody to come together. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. And you know, once once you sort of learn what to listen out for with a melody, um, mm -hmm. you kind of uh, things to sort of fall into place a little easier. Like you start to that's the that's the, that's the jump that starts off the vocal yeah. melody, yeah. and you begin to learn that that's a uh, you know that's a perfect fourth interval for sure. Um, and you know, there's plenty of sort of guide songs or little little tricks that that, uh, that you can use to 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 learn uh, you know a melody like that. Yeah. You know. Now, one thing we were actually talking about the other day, mm -hmm. not you you and myself, but I was talking to Nate actually about it, the guy yeah. who does a lot of the guitar stuff, yeah. and he uses a program called Practica Musica. Okay. Are you familiar with no, that? No, I'm not. Basically, it allows you to just sit down at your computer and just ear train. And it right. does all the ear training stuff for you. It's based on piano, and it allows you to kind of test your ears for intervals. Cool. And it really has helped him a lot. I, yeah. I've done a little bit of it, and I really enjoyed it as well. Sweet, sweet. So you guys yeah. should check that out. Practice yeah. music. Yeah. Totally check it out. You know, ear training is such a gift. Like if you if you if you take the time to mm -hmm. uh, to emphasize some ear training, you're gonna just man, it's gonna like pay off huge for you in, in the long run. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's that's the verse. Um, now, obviously, just go, maybe like, you know, rewind this or check the archive out to, to really just dive into what exactly those melody notes were uh, as I was playing. Um, and, you know, feel free to email me because I know this is, this is probably more, more challenging uh, of the songs that we've, uh, that we've taught so far. Uh, but let's go into the next section, which uses some different chords. So this is kind of like the pre-chorus. Um, and the chords actually simplify here, which is nice. They're just sort of straight. I sometimes even just play them as straight intervals. It's just, just straight fifths without any sort of uh, in, in inner third at all. Right. So uh, I'm just playing an F interval followed by an E flat five, followed by a D flat five, and then climb back up. And so the melody here, um, um, I'll just go to bar 21 of our uh, little little phrase here, and then we'll get we'll get into uh, what I'm teaching here, which is going to start on bar 25. So. So that's the phrase. It's super simple. So all it is is just we have that basic movement. You can either play them as triads. You can play F minor, E flat major, D flat major, E flat major, F minor, or you can just keep them as fifths. And the right hand just kind of, again, does this sort of pentatonic thing. And as you're playing this and practicing it, I really encourage you, again, just like think about what this sounds like because this is a super common. There's just so much music that kind of uses stuff like that, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go back to 50 BPM, and I'll play both of these really quick here. So this is uh, bars 25 through to uh, 28. So that's that section. Uh, really simple, just kind of keep quarter notes in, in, the, in the left hand. And after that, uh, the arrangement that I have um, written out for you goes back to that intro. And then we have another one of those verse progressions.
we get to the sort of second version of the chorus, um, which uses those same chords. So, so I'm on bars 41 here. So we have that same chord progression of the F minor to the E flat to the D flat. Um, but this time, rather than our melody being down here, it's that sing, you know that sing for me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna belt up. <laughs> We're not gonna just gotta do it. <laughs> okay. So it starts on the A flat. Uh, so A flat, G, and F. Those are kind of the notes that you're using to, you know, do our Steven Tyler impression here. <laughs> um, and so this is what the kind of climactic chorus of the song is. I'd say other than maybe the intro, this part here is what people think about when they think of, the, of this song. Oh yeah. So it goes like this. suspense chord again. But yeah, it's really only using those four notes. So F, uh, G, A flat, and E flat. Mm -hmm. So let's take it super slow again, okay. and I'll play that passage really, really slow for y'all. Man, this is slow. <laughs> okay, three. And you can kind of add that like creeping tension. Yeah. That's all I'm doing there is just bopping up on the C note to the C sharp. That's the uh, Jaws thing. That's the Jaws thing. That's yeah. totally, yeah. Yeah, that would be the easiest lesson I ever teach the Jaws, <laughs> yeah. the Jaws theme. <laughs> Two notes. Now, one thing I. <laughs> uh, one thing I notice is the power chords or the five chords, we call them power chords. I don't know if you guys in yeah, call them I mean, power chords. Yeah. Are very like. Classic rock, rock and rolly sounding. When yeah. You leave out the third, so it, yeah. it sounds like it fits really well when you leave the third out. Yeah. You know, I I I I, I kind of like it better as just the power chords myself. Yeah. Especially it's it's like a chill version of power chords. I find it makes the melody stronger too. You're right. Yeah. Um, especially in a scenario like this, where um, you'll you'll see how we have just our open framework for the chord in our left hand, our one and our five, and then the right hand's actually handling that melody kind of harmony note. Mm -hmm. So uh, because we're playing an A flat in the melody, that's actually the minor third of the chord anyways. Ah, okay. So we've got this kind of like, we're sort of spacing out the musical information, yeah. if you will. Yeah, it's yeah. a very neat effect. Yeah. Okay, so there's one other section that I wanted to get to in this song, and that's the... Uh, uh, the dream on section, and again, it's basically that melody, but now it has this ascending, ascending power chords, basically. So we're starting off in B flat, and then we're just walking up the F minor scale, but we're walking up in fifth intervals. So we're, we're going from B flat to F, but we're also playing the, the fifth on top of each note, so it goes like this, it goes. where Steven Tyler is just wailing on the dream on. Yeah. And then it kind of just vamps on, on the one chord for a while. And that's actually how the song ends. The song just yeah. kind of ends on this like crazy like... Yeah. I think it just sort of like fades out on this weird thing. Um, but you know what, the beautiful thing about covering things on piano is you can kind of cover them your own way and you can come up with your own endings. And maybe you just want to like... Or maybe you want to go back to the intro.
Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So that's those are those are all the components of the song that I wanted to teach. Yeah. Um, I know that's a ton of information. So if anyone has some questions about a specific part or about a philosophy behind um, you know well, anything anything at all, um, yeah, let's uh, let, let's let's totally hear it. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to address with this one. And if they don't get their question and say for the live lesson, could they? Email you or post in the forums or yep. anything like that if they have more questions. Totally, yeah. Even if you if you don't get the question uh, live here, um, we'll have we'll have this lesson archived shortly. Um, you can you can watch it and rewatch it as many times as you want. Email cool. me then, or you can make a comment on the archive, uh, just comment section of the of the lesson itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So many many ways to get a hold of me. Cool. Yeah. Now I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Is there now this seemed like a little bit more of a challenging song? Yeah. In this vein. Yeah. Uh, are there other maybe classic rock bands that use piano or anything like that that would maybe be a better introduction? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Like there's, like, Elton John's always great. Mm -hmm. There's actually yeah. a version, um, Elton John's uh, Your Song. You know Your Song. I know the song. Yeah. yeah. Um, his version of it is actually fairly challenging. Okay. But there's a modern cover by, do you know who Ellie Goulding is? I do. Yeah. yeah. She has a version that just, singer. yeah, just kind of simplifies the chords. Okay. So it's like this. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty little version. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that, that would be an example, maybe? Yeah, that would be an example. Do you think maybe just simplified versions of more popular songs? Like, if someone maybe wanted to play this song, they could just do just the chording part and leave totally. the melody out, maybe? You know what would be a good challenge for anyone who's at an introductory level is just, like, think about the, um, the intro progression. Ah, uh, yeah. Because this is challenging. There's a lot... Some um, move, weird movements. There's some like weird that. movements, and to me, I wouldn't even say it's necessarily challenging in a, in a technical sense. It's just unfamiliar. Right. Uh, if you're a new piano player, you're probably used to seeing chords and playing chords of, of a certain shape and, a, and, and, and sort of in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting to a song like this and you have a chord that's like that or like this, it's just a weird shape. Your, your mind and your sort of musical instinct might not know what to do with that when you first right. come across it. Uh, but that's why a song like this is, um, is really valuable to learn, even at a, even at a kind of an early stage. Because rhythmically, it's all the same. It's all eighth notes. Yeah. It's all built on this kind of beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, little hand motion. You can kind of like T-Rex it with just the three, <laughs> yeah. three fingers. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it helps reinforce this idea that, the, that notes can move subtly within that shape. Like I just, I just love the the movement of going from the from the F note here to the E flat to the D to the D flat. Yeah. Like that, that's a cool movement, and it sounds sophisticated. You sound legit when you, you know. Oh yeah. When you move down like that, yeah. but it's really, it's really quite simple. Okay. So tricks like that are, are just really versatile to kind of get in your bag. And it's one of the more recognizable parts of the song, which is always cool to learn. Yeah, one of those. yeah. I know when I learned when I learned songs when I was kind of first starting, on, starting out on guitar, yeah. I just learned like the cool parts of oh, totally. songs, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just bust out little 30 second like the greatest hits of the song. Yeah. Someone would be like, play the whole song. Like, mm. can't do it. <laughs> yeah, just can't do it. fade uh, out right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we do have a question here. It's not exactly a question, but okay. it's from Vincent, hey, Vincent. Uh, who's also a member over on guitarlessons.com. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, 
he wants to say that this is probably the most, or you had said that this is probably the most challenging song cover yet, yeah. but it is most certainly the best one for me yet. Oh, awesome. So please tell Jordan that, Vinti or that Vincent wants to personally say a big thank you. Hey man, Vincent. thank you. Yeah, really appreciate that. You know, this is, like, it's challenging, but that's not meant to discourage anybody. This is something that anybody can sort of tackle this. Um, just make sure that you've done your, uh, your you know, get, make sure you've got your basic theory kind of under your belt. Because uh, once you learn to just see this song in the key of F minor, which mm -hmm. is the key it's in, that helps simplify things a lot because you're not worrying about, you know, what, you're not, you're, you're really only worrying about the four black keys that the song's yeah. going to use. Yeah. Uh, so things like that are, are, are a great tip. And are there any non-diatonic chords? Well, there are, yeah. There are, yeah. There are like this, that chromatic movement, mm -hmm. um, that kind of, you know, in, in the intro there, yeah. uh, you know, uses stuff like that. But generally speaking, if you're kind of at a loss for, you know, if you're figuring a song out by ear and you're like at a loss for like what's, what, what notes should I be just like using as like trial and error to figure things out, yeah. stick with the notes at the that the song's key is in. Right. Um, is usually a good rule. Mm -hmm. And if there's something that sounds really weird to you, then maybe like tr see what non-diatonic uh, little tone is being used. Right, yeah. okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, then I just had one more question, something I was thinking about a little bit. Yeah. With piano, it seems like you guys use inversions a fair amount, yeah. chord inversions. Yeah. And with guitar, we don't really use them that much. Really? Yeah, and I was just wondering, like, what would be the purpose of choosing to use an inversion over kind of the standard layout? Of right. The chord? Well, that this is, this is a great song to demonstrate the power of inversions because mm -hmm. the beginning, that the very beginning melody, is a chord inversion. Like it's right. it's F minor in second inversion. If I were to play this in root position, it's like uh -huh. not a song. be kind of like the version if, if we didn't bother with like worrying about or, or that that would be the version of the song if in just like root yeah. position yeah so inversions uh, with piano they serve a real melodic purpose okay um, because remember when as uh, the human ear tends to listen to the highest note kind of like we, we prioritize that one so when I have this when I have this chord here you're probably like the note that you're hearing most of all is that A flat. No doubt. Yeah. Whereas if I were to play down here, you know, that one kind right. of rings through or it's a little it's a little more uh, it's a little more ambiguous which yeah. which tone you listen to. Yeah. So when you're playing chords in, in their different inversions, listen to how they sound because they serve uh, they serve a really sonic purpose right. as well as a practical one of just moving around the piano. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, very cool. Yeah, very cool. That's yeah. always interesting to hear from somebody who plays a different instrument about things like that. Totally. Yeah. Like, and I'm being a bit selfish here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, that's it for questions. Okay. Was there anything else that you wanted to kind of go over? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think we went over everything that I wanted to in this lesson. If anybody has more questions, or maybe if there's like a ton more like uh, of, of questions, maybe someday we'll revisit a song like this yeah. and do like a little part two or something. Because there's obviously there's a ton of ways that you can personalize this and for sure. make it into something really cool. Um, but yeah, for now, uh, just practice it as is. Use the sheet music as a guideline. Uh, don't use it as like a, a hard set rule because uh, again, the vocal melody is kind of drifting all over the place. So you can you know use that as an excuse to have some freedom. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Cool. Okay. Well, do you maybe want to play us out? Then? Yeah. I'll do a version of this song out, and we'll kind of improvise on on the form a bit. And thanks so much, everybody. And thank you again, Andrew. For sure, man. Thanks, guys. See All ya. Right.